Matthew chapter 3 is where John baptizes Yeshua. So we will begin with uh, the word baptize. The word baptize is a replacement word. It is not the translation. It is the transliteration of the Greek word baptismos. The Hebrew word, the, the translation, is tevel, tevel, tet, bet, lamed. And the function of that verb root is to dip into liquid, dipping, right? Uh, bathing or washing uh, or a, a cloth or a turban that's dipped into dye to change its color, right? So tevel, that is the translation of the word, the word baptize, which we are accustomed to, is not the translation, it is the transliteration of the Greek, baptismos, uh, which they don't relay what the actual function or meaning is, but in the Hebrew, it is a tevel, which uh, means to dip into liquid, or like a garment is dipped into dye, and when it comes out, it's totally different color. So we'll recognize the, the principle and the intent that immersion, I will use the term immersion, to immerse for the, the transfiguration of your nature, dying to who you were and coming after being dipped into the liquid or the water, like Yeshua, you come out transformed with a new nature that you have to grow into, okay? Uh, we, we will read and we will see what's expected of the action of being dipped into water, immersed into water. So, you can say correctly, uh, Yohanan, the immerser, or John the Dipper. <laughs> okay, so in, uh, in chapter 3, verse 13, it says, uh, Then Yeshua came from Galil to Yohanan at the Jordan to be dipped or immersed by him. And Yohanan tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be immersed or dipped by you. And are you coming to me? But Yeshua answered, and he said unto him, Permit it to be done so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all satisfying of objective justice, to fulfill all sadiq, sadiq, sade, dalit, kof. Verb function of that word is to right wrongs, make corrections, satisfy objective justice. That's what they translate as righteous or righteousness. Hmm? So I see something interesting here. Yeshua said, immerse me for this is the practice for us. Here he is identifying with humanity to fulfill all satisfaction of objective justice, to fulfill all that needs to be corrected, to fulfill all righting of wrongs. This is the point. This is the beginning point. Uh, and then it says, verse 15, then he allowed him, and verse 16, when he had been immersed or dipped into water, Yeshua came up immediately from the water and see the heavens were open to him. Right? And he saw, and he saw, this is, you know, these are synoptic records of Yeshua's account and story. Matthew, Matityahu, Yohanan, Luke, and Mark. Right? Same story, different facets of his character and actions. Right? So, 
the he saw the spirit of powers descending upon him was Yohanan, right? It was Yohanan because Yohanan was told because he had a question, how will I know who the coming one is? And Yahweh told him, when you see the spirit alighting upon him from heaven like a dove, then you will know he is the one. Okay, so here we have in the last part of verse 16, it says, when Yeshua came up out of the water, it says the heavens were open to him. The heavens were open to Yeshua. So this is what will happen to you who are immersed or dipped, right, in water. When you come up, the transformation that happens inside the water, which we'll go over, will allow for you now to be spiritually sensitive and aware of heavenly things. Huh? So it, it says the heavens were open to him, Yeshua, and then the he is Yohanan. He saw the spirit of powers descending like a dove and alighting upon him, confirming that he's the one to Yohanan. And then verse 17, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And so you will receive the confidence of knowing that you are truly a son, which you should never be able to be shaken from. That internal confidence that you know you are the son of the Most High. Amen? So that took place. And then we know in chapter 4, the Spirit took Yeshua up to be tempted. And you can read that on your own. You know the story. So here's what takes place upon being dipped or immersed in water. All right, go to Romans chapter 6. So in chapter 6 of Romans, it explains what happens when you are immersed. Okay, I'll, I'll start at verse 1 of chapter 6. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that... Uh, Devotion to meeting needs may abound. They say the word grace, that is the replacement word also. Uh, the Hebrew word is chesed, chet samek dale, which means devote to meeting needs, chesed. That's what they mainly translate as mercy. Devote oneself to meet the needs of others or to be selfless, chesed, to be selfless. If you're selfless, then you're looking out to meet the needs of others, right? That's what this word is. So what shall we say then? Shall we continue? It says, shall we continue in sin that devotion to needs may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Right? Or verse 3, or do you not know that as many of us as were immersed or dipped into the anointing of Yeshua, were immersed into his death. This is what happens. Therefore, we were buried with him through immersion, through dipping into death. You go into the water, dying to yourself, right? That just as the Messiah was raised from the dead by the honor of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. When we come up, we are new. All your bondages, all your strongholds, fiery darts, past hurts, pains, suppressed hatred, unforgiveness will stay underneath the water. All your enemies will die. Just like they died chasing Israel out of Egypt when they crossed the Sea of Reeds. All that they knew that it is, had them enslaved in, in Egypt, they saw perish in the sea. And now they had to learn how to be free. We don't know how to be free. We like bondage. <laughs> we, we get scared when things are going right for too long and peaceful and there's a joy. It's like, wait a minute, something, I don't know. We're not used to that. That's sad. But praise Yahweh, he will enable us to get used to it because that should be the norm so that we can be his vessels, setting other people free as well. Amen? Okay, so verse 5. 
For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also should be in the likeness of his resurrection. So here, watch this. We should be functioning like he did when he was resurrected. The fullness of his anointing. Here's a passage. Mark that one. Right? Knowing, verse 6, knowing that, knowing this, that our old man, our old nature, the nature we were born with, which, who was our father with that nature? The devil, Satan, that serpent of old called the dragon, right? Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, right? So we, we had no otherwise before this point of immersion than but to sin, because it was part of our nature. And the Most High, Yahweh Elohim, knew that. So he showed us a lot of compassion. You know, as children, we understand they don't know anything. We have to mold and shape them to know what they need to know to fulfill their purpose in life. And so we grant them a lot of compassion and give them long leashes <laughs> like Yahweh does to us. Right? So that, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Verse 7. For he who has died has been freed from sin. So being immersed is a voluntary death that you're submitting to, to you. Amen? Now, if we died with the Messiah, we believe that we will also live with him when we resurrect into his likeness, right? Knowing that the Messiah, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him, for the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to powers, to Yahweh Elohim, right? Likewise, you also consider yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. We don't have to sin anymore, consciously, right? Not that we sin unconsciously, but I'm just saying, we don't have to sin anymore. You may remember things, but they don't have that pull or stronghold on you anymore. You may want to do things out of memory, but that's, and you'll do it only because you want to, not because you have to anymore, right? Because that nature is dead and gone. Now you have a new nature, the seed of Yeshua in you, and uh, reading the word will nourish that seed. It will take root and then begin to grow and sprout and blossom until you function in the fullness of his anointing like he showed us when he was resurrected those 40 days uh, with the disciples. Amen. Okay. Likewise, you also consider or reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to powers in the anointing of Yeshua, our master. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lusts. Re remember uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 10 through 12 says, always carrying about in my body the dying of the master Yeshua, that the life of Yeshua also may be manifest in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Yeshua's sake, that the life of Yeshua also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in me so that life can happen in you. There's that chesed, there's that uh, devote to meeting needs of others and me being selfless. Amen? And verse 13, And do not present your members as instruments of, un, of, of wickedness to sin, but present yourselves to powers as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of corrections, of righting of wrongs, to powers, to Elohim, to Yahweh. Right? For sin, verse 14, will not have dominion over you, for you are not under the Torah's instructions or teachings anymore, but you are under the devotion to meeting needs from being selfless. That's the word chesed, not grace. Amen? We understand? Most people, they want to get filled with the Spirit because they think that the Spirit will just take over them. You know, their intent and motive is they don't want to be responsible. But just because you have His Spirit dwelling in you, the Spirit will not take over. Every, our walk with Yahweh is voluntary every step of the way, every moment of our existence. 
volunteered. He will not take over. People, you know, they, 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 they say, oh, I want to get immersed. Uh, I want to be filled with the Spirit, right? Because they think everything will just be turned over from that point, and then they'll, you know, the Spirit will take over, and now they, they're just going along for the ride and not responsible. Uh, that's not the case, right? You still have a choice to make. If you choose in league with Yahweh and His Word, then the Spirit will enable you. We don't have no strength or capability or, or power to live that life. That's why Father gave us His Spirit. Because the nation of Israel kept failing Him in the first covenant. We see, you know, Paul said, yo, look, them boys messed up. Let's, let's learn from what they did do. And now we got the Spirit too. We are without excuse. Right? But Yahweh will not just take over the reins and get in the driver's seat. No, he's the co-pilot who will follow your lead based upon your decisions or not. If you make choices from below that his presence cannot deal with, he will stay faithful to himself and you depart from him. You understand? Because he's not going to force you to stay in his presence or to be related to him. You know, it's, it's a, uh, Psalms 110 says, Yeshua, uh, the Spirit of Yahweh says, My people will be volunteers in the day of your power. Talking about the day that Yeshua sets up his kingdom on the earth. We're yoked to Yeshua. Yeah, because he'll always be there. He'll always be there to enable you, to empower you, and instruct you. Yeah. But you have to make the choice to do it. He's not going to do it for you. That's a growing into. That's a growing into. You see, come out of the water, now you been born again. Born again is an abstract term. The Hebrew says you're born from above. Born from above and it's continuous presence, participial. Right? Remember we said thoughts either come from above or below. So as long as you continue to receive the thoughts from above, that's being born again. Being born from above. You're constantly responding to the thoughts that come from the spirit of Yahweh and, and obeying him, doing whatever he says, right? And reading the word, feeding your spirit and your soul on the word is the nourishing nutrients that you need to grow and mature in his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's why you have to read the word like you eat food daily. More you eat three times a day, no matter how busy you are, you need to be in that word more than the times that you eat for your physical strength to carry out your responsibilities, for our spiritual strength, for our spiritual respons responsibilities as citizens of his kingdom and the light of the world. In Yeshua's name. And then, like Yeshua was taken up by the Spirit to be challenged by the enemy for 40 days, from this day, the, uh, the next 40 days, the adversary will challenge your choice of being immersed and being renewed this day. Yahweh will allow it just to test your loyalty. <laughs> Amen. But because you have the spirit, like Yeshua overcame, you too will overcome. And he's going to hit you with every uppercut, back fist, front kick, <laughs> roundhouse, <laughs> hook, that he, he knows. He knows your life. He knows where he used to have you. But I'm telling you, you will be able to overcome it because the Spirit is in you. Amen? But uh, from now, or the day you immerse to four days after, just know the enemy's going to pull out all stops to try and trip you up. But he won't be successful in Yeshua's name. Amen.